Hey everybody, Aiden here, uh, broadcasting from a new location as you can see. And today I have a solo ranking for all of you, which is ranking the films which starred Humphrey Bogart and his wife Lauren Bacall. The four Bogart and Bacall films, you know, probably one of the most famous screen pairings of a husband and wife in film and especially iconic of the cinema of 1940s Hollywood. So, yeah, so I'll, I'm going to get into it. So the four that films that they made together that I'll be ranking are To Have and Have Not, directed by Howard Hawks, The Big Sleep, directed by Howard Hawks, Dark Passage, directed by Delmer Daves, and Key Largo, directed by John Huston. So, number four, and last place, but I still think it's a good movie. This is going to be controversial uh, of an opinion, but I'm going to go with The Big Sleep. Um, this is a movie that I've waned on a little bit since originally watching it. I still enjoy it a great deal, but I think there's a lot of problems with it that it's kind of hard to ignore. Um, the story's really fragmented. The other three films, I think, have much clearer plots than this. This seems, you know, kind of muddy at times. It's hard to tell um what the plot is because essentially you know it's a whodunit mystery starring humphrey bogart as philip marlowe um as he cracks this crazy case but the problem is just a lot of the kind of mechanics of the case aren't explained and it's kind of confusing to know um who was behind what uh but disregarding that, uh, Humphrey Bogart and Lauren Bacall have amazing chemistry in this movie. The one-liners are so good. It, it, it nails that style of writing. Um, I think it's kind of the gold standard in that respect. And the climax is really engaging and really fun. So for that reason, I'm going to go with four stars out of five for this movie. The Big Sleep, I really enjoy it, but I just enjoy the other three a little bit more. So that's why it's there. And number three, uh, this might be most people's number four, but for me, I got it one more spot up. Dark Passage, the third film they made together, directed by Delmer Daves. This film is pretty famous for its kind of gimmick, uh, you could say, which is that the first act or so the first maybe 40 minutes is told first person perspective with the camera shooting from humphrey bogart's character's point of view i really like that choice uh i but for me actually i prefer the kind of second half of the film when it moves beyond that just because i think there's a lot of really engaging set pieces in the second half like the stick up which leads into the carjacking sequence and that's all so well done. I really like Humphrey Bogart's performance here because I think he hits the right sweet spot of kind of uh, world-weary cynicism, but also optimism and charm. And I think in this one and Key Largo, uh, Lauren Bacall shines as a great actress. I think she's really coming into her own. You know, I mean... It's easy to take advantage of, to take for granted now, but, you know, Hollywood leading ladies in the 1940s didn't really talk or act or look a lot like Lauren Bacall. You know, she was 5'10", she would, you know, trade barbs with her male co-stars, and she was in many ways ahead of her time in terms of Hollywood's depiction of women. And in all four of these films, she's just really amazing. And in this one, she plays character named Irene who is obsessed you could say with the case of Bogart's character who's a man framed falsely for killing his wife but there's kind of a twist as to why she's obsessed with it and it's not the traditional like oh she's in love with him or whatever you know the movie subverts your expectations in a very clever and smart way um, and I think that really counts for something uh, and finally, another thing I really enjoy about this movie is I just love the look of it. It's set in San Francisco, uh, filmed mostly on location, which is kind of rare for that time. 
and you really get a sense of the look of the city. You know, obviously the caricature thing about San Francisco that always shows up in movies is the dramatic hills, and those are used to great effect here because the movie, you, because, you know, it's essentially a noir film, so it, it uses that extreme physical space as an advantage in framing shots dramatically. It has, that's kind of an advantage of the location, I guess, is that it naturally lends itself to extreme scenarios. So for this film, I'm going to give it 4.5 out of 5. I think it's a really great movie, uh, but it's just going to be my number three, because moving on, number two, I think these two are kind of a fairly common top two to have, but I'm not sure. Uh, my number two is going to be the sole film directed by John Huston, uh, who is one of my all-time favorite directors. Um, it's Key Largo. It's actually only, I think, the fifth film directed by Houston, uh, and it follows Humphrey Bogart's character, who is a... Um, he essentially... In this film, it plays a lot with him being perceived as a coward, and um, in this one, he's in Key Largo in Florida, and he meets Lauren Bacall, and, um, but they're, and he's staying at a hotel in the, in the Florida Keys. But the hotel gets um, held ransom by uh, a gangster who's played by Edward G. Robinson. And that is really great. You know, it's a great set piece. I've heard it described as a chamber drama, which I think means a film largely set in one location. Key Largo is definitely that. It could be a play. Uh, it might have actually originally been a play. I don't actually know that. Um, but yeah, regardless, the film just excels with its moody presentation of the weather. You know, they're trapped because of a hurricane, uh, and that's when they get held up by Edward G. Robinson. Um, it plays with the dramatic storm lighting. You know, all of these films are in black and white, and all of them, to varying degrees, take great advantage of the heightened contrast between light and shadow that you can have in that format. Um, so yeah, all of that stuff is great, and I love the climax set on a moving boat uh, where Bogart, you know, defeats Edward G. Robinson. That's great. It's a great difference in a set piece um, in that you had uh, the first large portion of the film was kind of one style, one location, this kind of dramatic, moody character piece. And the other, and the finale is a lot more action-driven, and it's more about motion. And um, yeah, that's that. I think that's really great. A uh, side bit about this movie is in one of the episodes of The Sopranos, uh, Christopher is watching this on the uh, on his TV. So it has that uh, seal of approval. So it must be a pretty good movie. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna go 4.5. Um, out of five and I really enjoy it. It's probably my number five or number six of 1948, but that that year is probably my favorite of all time. So many classic movies, really not a knock against it that there are uh, some others that I like more. Um, yeah, and so finally number one is gonna be their first film together, directed by Howard Hawks, To Have and Have Not, the film that started the phenomenon of Humphrey Bogart with Bacall, and it's the movie where they met on set and they fell in love in real life, so that ends, lends a kind of uh, real life significance to it. But ultimately, I just think this is the most complete, literary, satisfying film experience. It's based on Ernest Hemingway's uh, famous novel. However, there are many details changed. The setting has been moved from Cuba to Martinique. Uh, the script was actually adapted by William Faulkner, another great writer. Um, so two great minds coming together for the story and the screenplay. Um, but this film, you know, it's, it's set in Martinique during the Second World War, during the time of Vichy France and French uh, occupation by Germany. Um, and it follows uh, Humphrey Bogart's character as he, um, Harry Morgan, as he navigates this kind of dark and 
ambiguous world and in the end he decides to do the right thing helps out the allies um this film also features hoagie carmichael uh playing the piano he does a really great version of his song hong kong blues a really classic traditional jazz song uh that he plays during this film that's one of my favorite scenes um but ultimately it comes down to the classic classic lines you know obviously uh you know how to whistle steve you just put your lips together and blow i mean classic lines that are just iconic and everyone knows um but it just yeah it's just a really special movie it's it's a movie where you can feel the magic happen on set uh i know when it came out a lot of critics thought it was too much of a ripoff of casablanca i do see that there's a lot of similarities i mean bogart's playing a similar character who has kind of the same arc of helping out the allies in world war ii but i still think this movie has a, a unique identity by itself it's not the same thing as casablanca it's not just a ripoff or a remake it's its own movie and that's great and uh yeah it's a it's a blast um it's kind of the perfect sweet spot between uh howard hawks's earlier movies a lot of the romantic comedies he was known for like ball of fire and um his gal friday and bring up baby and stuff but it also has that noir element of the big sleep without turning it totally into uh kind of detective yarn uh so it balances those two kind of phases of his career really well it might be my favorite film directed by hawks i really don't know i'd have to rewatch everything and figure it out but it's certainly a movie i like a lot um i'd give it five stars it's my favorite of the four films that starred humphrey bogart and lauren bacall so yeah and it's, it's worth mentioning too uh there was you know this is this is lauren bacall's first ever film appearance she's i think 19 filming this and it's her very first time in a film and she just knocks it out of the park and also meets humphrey bogart on the set um so that's it's, it's insane to imagine you know she was my age and it's, it's hard for me to imagine being uh the age i am right now and um starring in a film of this caliber and this uh level of just grandeur uh -huh. so i hope you enjoyed that video um i hope you enjoy the videos i do on the channel with other people they do sometimes without me, you know, we mix and match. We'll probably have some more content without me soon. Um, yeah, so I just hope you enjoyed the video. Subscribe, like, whatever. Just uh, hope you dug it. Have a good day, guys.